This class focuses on the creation of the European Union, why Ireland joined at a later point, and the symbols and values at the heart of the EU. The European Union was called European Coal and Steel Community when it was first created in 1951. On the 9th of May 1950, the French Foreign Affairs Minister Robert Schuman made a declaration which said that Europe will not be made all at once or according to a single plan. It will be built through concrete achievements which first create a de facto solidarity. Two countries on the European continent had been at the heart of two world wars in less than 30 years, namely France and Germany. In order to try and guarantee peace rather than putting together great plans with great ambitions, the European idea was to try and work together in limited areas first. If it worked, it could then think of being more ambitious. The pooling of coal and steel production was chosen as a way to construct the first European community because they were two materials used to make weapons and ammunitions. France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg, Luxembourg got together and set up the first European community to guarantee peace. This is why in 2012 the European Union received the Nobel Peace Prize because it had succeeded in keeping peace for 60 years. Since the declaration was made on the 9th of May 1950, 9th of May is Europe Day every year across the EU. It is one of the symbols of the EU, just like St. Patrick's Day is that of the Republic of Ireland. In 1957, the European Coal and Steel Community decided to extend its scope to other areas like agriculture, and it became the Europe European Economic Community. It's actually only in 1992, with a treaty signed in Maastricht, that it was renamed European Union, with the ultra-ambitious goal of a common currency and an economic monetary union. The name EU is quite recent. Ireland joined the EEC in 1973, together with the UK and Denmark. Its membership marked a shift from a rather closed and protect protectionist society and economy to an open and competitive one. It gave Ireland access to the single market, a large trading area with no tariff barriers of products entering each other's market. The EU is considered as one big market rather than a juxtaposition of the German market, the French market, the Polish market, etc. During this class, you might also discuss the other symbols of the EU. The flag, which is blue, with a circle of 12 stars, nothing to do with the number of states, since there are 27 countries in the EU club. 12 is a number which represents unity and harmony. The anthem, which is Ode to Joy, music composed by Beethoven. The EU's motto, which is unity and diversity. You can take the example of registration plates, for example, across the EU, which are all different in how they use combinations of letters and numbers, but all have a strip on the left side with the EU flag and the letter of the country the car is from. Finally, the euro can also be taken as an example of unity and diversity. All euro coins and cents have an identical value face with the amount, the EU map and the 12 stars of the flag. However, they all have a different symbol at the back depending on which country minted them. The symbol for Ireland is the harp, but you can get the children to examine other coins. It is important to remind them that no matter the symbol at the back, the coin is a euro or a cent and can be spent in any country using the euro. The euro is not quite a symbol of the EU because 19 countries only out of the 27 use the euro. So for example, Sweden, Denmark or Poland don't use the euro. The lesson ends on the crucial concept of solidarity at the very heart of the EU. It means supporting each other and acting with a team spirit rather than individually. As an example for poor solidarity in the last few years, you might mention the, mi the migration crisis which saw EU countries fight against each other rather than have a united front.